few weeks ago, my wife and I celebrated a wedding anniversary. My wife, who thinks I like trains, made me this lovely card. My first action, I wonder what locomotive it is. Number 6000, OK. A quick look at my Ian Allen. 6000, there it is, the 6000 class, called King. And there it is, number 6000, King George V. Very good. So, delve into my locomotive names. King George V. There it is. King George V, number 6000, King Class, made for the Great Western Railway in June 1927. So, the next thought onto eBay, see what I can find, and I came up with this. Hi there YouTubers, welcome to another service and video from Sort 6233. This time it's a 00 gauge Lima King George V and it came like this, separated these wires coming from the locomotive to the tender um, and not the best condition, there's a, a broken buffer stop at one end, uh, there's a little break I think somewhere else, um, but it's got the drive gear on both sides, the tender is uh, loose, and these wires here, now incidentally I was just as I got this I was watching Double O Bill and he had a locomotive with the same kind of wiring arrangement and that turned out to be a 01 decoder module which I know has got three wires so I wonder if this is the same I also wonder if we bought this from the same seller so let's have a look at what this is all about, so I'm going to try and disconnect these wires, they seem to be soldered on, so I'll have to deconnect them. Right, give me a minute to do that. Well, wires are disconnected, I'll leave the locomotive to one side for the time being. This is a tender top. Two tabs broken at the back for holding it back on, so that'll need tension. Uh, and this is the motor and the familiar Lima Ringfield motor. I don't know if it works, so I'm going to apply just a little bit of power to the brush poles. I can feel that it's trying to work, but I don't want to give it too much power in case I damage the motor. So, trying to turn it, it does feel very sluggish, so it will obviously need a good overhaul. With the locomotive disconnected from the tender, this toe bar has obviously been modified at some point and that looks bent. Um, the mechanism doesn't work too bad but I think it obviously needs some lubrication. And I can see in here through the front pony that there's a screw. So let's see if this is the body retaining screw. <coughs> yep. 
Yeah, so I'll just take it completely out. So that's coming out there. And possibly unclip from the back. This maybe, yeah, this might hold it in too. So I'll remove the tender bar retaining screw. Which is reluctant to come out. Almost as if the thread stripped. Okay. Uh, right, I shall attend to that. And there we go. And you can see what's happened. The pillow is sheared off because the screw has been forced at some time. So let me see if I can remove this pillow. Hold it with pliers at one end and turn the screw at the other end. My goodness me, this should not be happening. Okay. Obviously there's a, a, a spigot or something in there. Oh, okay. I need to get it out, so I shall be back. Yeah, I'm going to attend to that before we go any further. What a struggle that was. Why did that happen? Because my, my main concern was that I didn't break the chassis. Play arm wrestle with an octopus screw to use a screwdriver, pair of pliers, hold this down with my arm. And, oh dearie me! Now what I've done, I've twisted these out of shape. Well, I can get that repaired, I'm sure. So, was this the right screw? Sorry, this one. Who's that pillar gone? Was this the right screw? Well, I can check that up later on. Alright, so now that I've damaged the pickup arms, I'll have to get that fixed. Yeah, definitely sluggy, so obviously a bit of lubrication all over the place. Looks as if there's a nut missing from here. Um, mm -hmm. So a little more damage than I thought. 
Never mind. Never mind. Makes it all the more interesting. Anyway, at least we know we can strip that down and attend to it. Just back to the ring field motor. I'm going to start by removing the motor from the casing, which should just be a case of removing these screws in the undercarriage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's funny to just say, oh, it's just a case of doing that, and then you find the screws are jammed, and you apply effort when I'm trying to make it look so smooth and professional. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll just take it as it comes. These self self tappers go into plastic casing, so it makes them kind of stiff in there and in this one here. And I suspect that this is due to age. I haven't really found out when this model was built, but. I'm hazarding a guess, maybe the 70s. So here we go, and the middle wheels are held in this little bracket. It's a case of die cast. I wasn't prepared for that. And the coupler could do with a little bit of lubrication and straightening. And here we have the offender. So, I think I'll remove the springs and the brushes before I get too deeply engrossed. And the brushes. Now, I don't really know if these are good or bad, but they certainly look as if they've got enough life in them. Which is just as well, because I don't have a source of a supply, I should say, of replacements. And they both look to have much of the same wear, so they should be okay. Right, now make sure everything's disconnected. Um, this here can keep on and remove the cover from the ring field. I appreciate my hands are in the way, but I'm sure you know where I'm going with this. I've been thinking, I can't remember the last time I worked on a Lima double O gauge locomotive. I worked on plenty of N gauge lemas. And I just noticed a little brass washer, so I better make sure I don't lose that. And there's a commutator looking a bit black, so just take a dry cotton bud to begin with. And yep, that will need a good clean. I think this should come out. Comes out of the housing and it looks in good condition. And the ring field motor from which it gets its name, I'll leave it there for the time being. Now, if I remember rightly, this clip here, and a Y clip, should slide up. And it's held over the held over the axles of the gears and lift that up, move it. 
Lift this one up, push it, and we should get there. There we go. So, slight rotation. Little bit of rust there that we cleaned. Symmetric looking gears, I don't need to worry too much about how they go. The bearing holes are different sizes for these two. And in here. So, there we go. I'll just connect and lead in there. Right. just slightly, would have been slightly slack anyway, but at least I know that's what I'm looking for when I put it back in together again. Right, I'll take them out from the, the end here. Uh -huh. I think this is a money saving exercise if you look at the wheels, they've got little pins in there for coin rods. So obviously they use these wheels on different locomotives. Okay. Brass washers again. And this one. Oh, so this one's moving, okay. There we go. And out comes the contact plate. Sorry about that. Okay. Wheels obviously needing a bit of a clean, but other than that, they don't seem too bad. Right, let's get these into a cleaning solution. Clean the commutator. I've dipped my cotton bud in Brasso and I've rubbed it and what a load of muck has come off. So let me just try the other end as well. Give it a second rub with the Brasso. And that certainly made a bit of a difference. So I cleaned it off with a clean cotton bud. Are we allowed to say cotton bud? Is that a proprietary name or a generic name? Cotton fluff stick, just in case anybody from the copyright is listening. And then I can clean the gaps. Oh, oops, sorry, I've left my cocktail strips to one side. I maybe should explain, so whilst I've done any repairs and I tidied my desk and 
All my stuff is all over the place. So, right, so that's looking a lot better. Put that into the ring field. <coughs> now, I got some of this. I've never used it before, but apparently it's very good, so I'm going to use this for the bearings and see how that works. So if I made a mistake and you guys are shouting at the screen, maybe you could let me know. So I'll just take a little piece of it, fit it onto the end of the bearing. I pushed it through so I can get some into the housing of the bearing. Then I'll push the motor back in again and that should catch some there. Fitting front cover. Oops. Certainly looks clean enough. A little bit of the grease. Excuse me. Oops, and fit this on again. Sits down pretty nicely. Just trying to catch the thread there. And in here. have to replace the brushes and the springs with the ones that come out because I don't unfortunately have replacements. To fit the brushes, I'm just going to fit the ones that come out because I don't have replacements. One in there with the spring. And then just press down on the arm. That should hold it in place there. Secondly for the other one, and as I look around I notice that the other spring has gone missing. That's a cut. I tried to reinsert this pillar here. Uh, I glued it in, I held it in with a cocktail stick, loaded down with some washer, uh, some nuts, and it seems to have held. The one little problem I had was that the glue had attacked the wood and the cocktail stick bro broke off. However, I've drilled it out and now it fits and I've got the screw here. Whoops, he says, scrabbling in the spare box. There we go. 
and that fits quite nicely in there, probably need a little bit of pressure. So this is not a very good design, I don't think, a threaded screw into a plastic column, um, but however that's what they did. Anyway, that will let me get the chassis built up. When I dismantled the drive mechanism inside here is this weight assembly and I'm going to try and let you see that just about here is a bulge and I think this is what they call mazak rot it's just swelling out and that's going to press against the chassis side which in turn will press against the wheels and that is not going to help anything so I'm going to try and remove the bulge basically just filing it down and hoping it will last a wee while longer it's quite a soft metal so I was able to just simply take a file and smooth it off and now it's pretty uniform throughout the whole length and it sits quite nicely in the chassis Oops. this bit here has to line up with this bit here so that the cradle for the wheels sits nicely and that goes in there nice and smooth and allows smooth turning of the wheels so that should at least give us a bit more use out of the lima. As I start to reassemble the motor, remember that there was a 01 module fitted here, and so the wires from here to the pickups were shortened, and I've also noticed this capacitor has definitely been replaced, and these long leads are just going to cause problems. So I'm just going to remove this, shorten the leads, and put it back in. That's a bit more neat, I would declare. To give this King George V a better chance, I, I, I purchased a spare set of brushes and springs from Peter Spears. The brushes fit into the capillary tube. Springs simply sit on top. And then they're held down as this carbon retainer is folded over the top so just a case of making sure that it doesn't spring back and that's it in and there's usually this little gap because it's very hard to close this gap I'll try and do it a bit better once I've got these both brushes in here's the second one drop it in take the spring it on top and apply just a bit of pressure lining the spring up with the pip and the holder and that should be it so this should now work so let me just bring in my power probe set to about 3 volts And, oops, you can't see that, sorry. Bring it in, and you just about see the armature rotating. I can feel it. There we go. Just applying a little bit more voltage. And that's it running real nicely and that should probably be running in for a while so I can do that once I get the rest of it assembled if you remember I had a 01 module fitted in here so the wires going to the pickups were much shorter than they ought to be so I'm going to replace that 
with a piece of decoder wire um, to wire up the pickups. Well, I think it's about time for reassembly and I'm going to start off with the pickup leads here. The original pickup lead was fed round underneath the chassis. I don't think that's a good idea, so I'm going to feed it round the side into that little gap and just simply solder onto the contact lead, which incidentally I've already cleaned and tinned. You may also notice I'm using a piece of white wire, that's deliberate, so that people will know that this is not original. So if someone else has to work on this in the future, they will know that it's been worked on, but hopefully they'll realise it's been worked on fairly well. This pickup plate will fit underneath, and it'll be held in place by one of the retaining screws in here. The axles. The drive axles have got a gear on one side and these are insulated bushes and a non-gear on the other side with non-insulated bushes and the gears go in the same side as the uh, pickup plate. So put it in there and I'm just going to apply a little bit of molly loop. I was going to show you what I'm going to use for lubrication. Um, I'm going to apply a mixture of molly lube and some very fine oil. And then the other wheel will sit on the axle. Like so. And then shortly I will check the um, the back to backs on it. Now for the other axle, that comes through here, and the wheel with the drive gear sits on top. Got a bit of molly cube, molly loop first of all. Sorry about the shot, trying to put some molly loop on the end of my screwdriver. Here we go. In there, and that will work its way in, and in here. And that also will work its way in. Then the wheel with the drive gear over the top. And again, I'll double check the back to back shortly. Okay. And I just realised a little problem, but I'll soon solve that. Take this wire out of the way because that's why I've been fed underneath to avoid clashing with the gears. Silly me. Right, I've cleaned the gears and I've got two sets of gears. I have to try and remember which way they're around to go. The plain one fits here behind the drive wheel and the one with the double gear sits there between the idler and the motor armature. And that fits in so. Similarly on the other side, whoops, I forgot my molly lube. I'm just squeezing a bit on there, over the spindle, over the spindle, and I'll do the same on this side when I've got a couple of seconds to spare. Slide this underneath over the spindle and that should work and hopefully with the motor a bit of friction obviously but that's not going too badly. Then I take the Y piece whoops this slides in over one of the spindles, over the other one, sorry, and then behind this little pin here, and that should basically kind of clip into place. There we go, and that should hold the assembly in. 
seems very kind of rough. That's because of... Oh, right. Yep, that's okay. Maybe just needs to work in. Anyway, I'll get that sorted out shortly. I'm now ready to test the tender. Just one little further word. Uh, this wire here, uh, I realise it might interfere with this gear, so I've rerouted it underneath the contact arm, and that should keep it clear from everything. Now, I can't just run my rolling road directly, because although this arm here is connected to this rail, this pickup here does not connect to the wheels on this side because they contain traction tyres. So the other feed is actually a function of the locomotive. So I'm just going to apply a temporary locomotive here and it will pick up the, the power from this rail here. Yeah, there we go. Let's get this tender rebuilt. Okay, here's the, the main chassis. The tender sits in, and if I remember rightly, this pickup is on the right as we look at it. Before I sit it in, though, I have to remember to fit the dummy centre wheels. There's a little spacing in here, and some grooves inside of the chassis. So this should just sit in there, like so, and then the, the rest of the tender bogey is simply sat on top of it, held in by two screws underneath. Lima tended to use a lot of these self-tappers. And this will then connect to the other pole of the motor. Whoops. Kinetic. Try this screwdriver. So that when the tender drawbar is connected through here, that will provide the second pole of power. So that goes in there and the similar one at the other end and make sure that they are reasonably tight quick check before we go much further not forgetting my substitute locomotive which I can now hook on to the tender itself and I think that this should now work oops sorry about the shot again and there we go right good 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 Now I want to fit the tender body. Uh, you may remember that these clips are broken and it was fitted with a 01 module which is why there's a big hole in the front. However, we'll worry about that later on. This clip at the back is okay and it fits in here but these clips at the front will make it flap around. But anyway, I think I've come up with a, st a solution. First of all, I have to put this in. Now that's quite tight, but I have found if I just slacken off this rear chassis screw, that can just slide in there. Oops, sorry, a bit more. Slide in there and clip. And then I can tighten this up again. 
that's the rear of the tender connected but the front laughing about like a gull's wing now this here is where the tender drawbar is connected and it's held by a rather thicker um, self tapper but what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to find I found a longer self tapper and I'm going to fit it through the drawbar into the chassis like so and then what I hope we'll find is that this will make its own catch inside the tender and that's it held pretty solidly I don't know how long it'll last it's going to be my machine anyway so I won't really have to worry about it so now I've got this tender working and as about as good as I'm going to get it I'll turn my attention to the locomotive so let's start with the wheel assembly three sets of driving wheels, two corn rods and the screws the middle drive wheel is held in by this screw which has got a built in spacer and it fits in through the corn rod and I should be able to catch the thread here and use my 3mm driver not too tight but that's still free and do the same on the other side trying to make sure that they're oriented in the same way yep I did notice something strange about these coin rods which I'll show you once I put this in normally these coin rods seem to have a fluted edge and the coin vex edge yeah this here seems to be made up of one of each this is a convex edge and this is a fluted edge and they don't seem to work the other way around I can't get them both fluted and I can't get them both convex I don't know if it makes a difference we'll soon find out once we put it into the chassis the rear driving wheels they have these smaller hex bolts insert that in carefully catch the thread plastic housing so I have to be careful I don't strip the thread by over tightening seems okay catch it at the rear and I think that once I put all these in they should basically self quarter so I don't think I need to worry about alignment of the wheels at least I hope not Oops. so we're trying to put this in it's what we call in this part of the world footery footery difficult to manage fiddly you probably think of sort of hard to move in restricted spaces yeah we footer yep and then the third uh, wheel should sit in here oops and just enough to catch come on 
There's another one that's turning out to be a wee footer. There we go. And we get. And that should pull it all in nicely. And the last one in here. And that's them. Wheel assembly. Uh, to fit the wheels into the chassis, remember this little bit here with the Mazak rod, it sits in there and the wheels will fit in like so. And they only have to be careful that these pickup arms are seated behind the wheels, there and there, and then this retaining plate, uh, there's a couple of grooves that fit in with the, um, the chassis, and this bit at the back, and that should just slide in fairly neatly, like so, held in by two screws. Yep. One. And two. Remembering that I have to fit the front pogey, front pony, underneath the screw when I'm doing a later assembly. But at the moment we can just work with this. And now hopefully this should work. And it just feels so much smoother than it did at the beginning. Um, and consideration makes me realise that probably that uh, Mazak was squeezing against the chassis side and a hindering the wheels. I'm just making sure these are okay. That's good. And that one. And that one. Just can't get to. And this one. This one. Good. I have to fit the piston rods and they fit under here. Now if I remember rightly they come up like so. Yep, so this is the other side and this is the one for this side. So, so it came out like this the pin fits into a hole in the cylinder block yeah and then that should just sit nicely into the cradle and this will fit on to the conrod spindle held in with a nut which I thought I had ready. Yep, here it is. Very small nut. Is this 10BA possibly? Very small. And on it goes. And a little tweak. There. Just a little duplication and similarly on this side here through the gap 
Fit the piston. And it goes. And then clip this into the cradle. And that sits nicely onto the spindle. And then the other little nut. And again, you do not want to drop these in the floor. He said there it is. Fortunately, not on the floor, just on the mat. And let's so a little tweak. And will this work? Oh, look at that. Look at that. I'm hardly putting any pressure on that at all. One finger. Driving a locomotive with one finger. This is looking good for our King George V, considering what I come in with. Yeah. I've resurrected my H&M rolling road because it's long enough to contain the whole locomotive. I've got the tender and the rollers and I'm using the pickup from this part fed onto the drawbar of the tender. And I wind the power up a little bit. You can see the tender is starting to run. Looks good. If I go in the opposite direction. There it goes. Now, I've actually made a mistake. Because if you look, the tender is actually back end on to the locomotive, which should be front end on. So what have I done? Well, I put the chassis in, in reverse. This side here with the pickups should be on this side. So keep watching this side, keep my finger on it. When I put the tender on here, the pickup should be on this side, this pickup should be on the other side, but at the moment they're both on the same rail. So I'm just going to have a quick simple check, take this out, tweak it around, put it back up together again, and we should have it running properly. Like that. Back end on to the locomotive, the front end onto the locomotive with the attachment there. So that's something for me to bear in mind for future restorations. Um, what are we going to do now? Well, get the body shell, get the uh, tender drawbar properly. Put the pony. So I shall just get ahead and do those little things. Be back soon. Right, let's finish the assembly of the locomotive. The wheel arrangement sits inside the chassis quite neatly in there. Held on at the front with the self tapper. And like so. And at the rear, the tender attached through the drawbar with this screw. And hopefully that should fit nicely in there. That should provide the continuity to allow the locomotive to run. So I'm just going to hook up my power pole, which has seemed to have disappeared suddenly. Um, okay, I'll just use this. A uh, bit of voltage on there. This side here and this side here. Good. So it works 
from the fields. And now for the moment of truth, sitting on the rails, apply a bit of power, and there we go. Of course, it's tender driven, so we want to enjoy seeing the corn rods spring round. So I'll need to try and get myself a bit of track and have it running, because uh, I would like to see it in operation. And just decide to start again. I'd like to see it in operation. So I'll try and find a little bit of track and get it up and running. Still got one or two things to do. I have to fit the front pony. And I realise that there are still some cosmetic issues to be dealt with. The buffers at the front. The pillars at the window. Um, but I can attend to those some other time further down the line. At the moment I'm just glad to get up running um, and I can do the cosmetic later on. Uh, I've got another George V so I'll try and get that one working as well. So let me try and wrap this up then. Uh, my wife's lovingly handmade anniversary card with a picture of King George V on it set me searching for one. I found this one, bad condition, and as you see I think I've done a fairly good job of getting it restored to running order. I don't have a double O gauge layout but I will do later on and I'm sure this will be lovely to watch. Talking of watching, thank you all very much for bearing with me this far. I think it's going to be a long video, but I hope you find it worthwhile. Let me just take the card out of the way. So, King George V, made by Lima, Wingfield Motor, badly looked after I feel. Um, some people have been hacking at it, bits broken, broken at the front, cosmetic stuff. There's even the nameplate missing from this side of the local. I can tend to these things later on. I just want to get it up running. I know it's going and I can put it safely to bed. I hope you enjoyed that. I found it very challenging, very interesting working in a locomotive I hadn't seen before, which is what I like doing. Um, so if you enjoyed that and you like model train repairs, a lot of people commented, it, commented that they found my repairs helpful to help them get their own locomotive repaired. If you use this, just let me know. It'd be nice to find that I'm helping somebody else. Um, I know there's things I probably could have done better, maybe you got a suggestion, then just put it into the comments. I'd love to hear from anybody who might feel they'd like to contribute to what's been going on. So subscribe if you haven't done so. Remember I do double O gauge, I do N gauge, I've even done TT gauge and in fact I've done an O gauge. I haven't managed to venture into any other like Z or Garden, but hey, life's ahead of me, you never know what's going to come up. So with that in mind, I'm going to wish you all thank you for watching and uh, take care. And until the next time, bye for now.